They're the Brits who race to the rescue down under. Multiple patients, critical. Everyday heroes saving lives. Five miles to run. Battling fires. You're not going out now, too late. It can be extremely dangerous. And fighting crime. Put your arm down. Police, open the door. From the big city to the outback. Our policing district is bigger than the whole of the UK. From the bush. He's been crushed between one of those dinga diggers and a ute. To Bondi Beach. The search continues for a British tourist who hasn't been seen since he went for a swim. You never quite know what you're in for or what's going to happen. 332, mate, on the heading. Very high impact. He's really quite critically injured. Brits on blue lights under blue skies. Today down under, a whole family's hurt in a car crash. The vehicle into a tree, 60 kilometres an hour. A three-year-old, seven-year-old and a five-year-old. Outback police officer Lorena books a drink driver. You've been drinking. Well, yes, you have. And finds she's a wanted fugitive. There's an arrest warrant out for you. And in the Sydney suburbs, a British flying doctor is called to a serious industrial accident. So that's a open book pelvis fracture. Tower on my left, feed for takeoff. The flying doctor is an Australian folk hero, born in the age of the biplane. Best bit to But this is how they take off today. Exactly, so we're going to fly right clear with us. And in New South Wales, he or she may well be a Brit. Uh, rescue 24, we're airborne out of Bankstown. James Milligan learned his life-saving skills on the wards of Leeds General Infirmary. Now he's about to bring them to the scene of a major road accident near Sydney. Rescue 24, thank you. It is a call to Lower Portland. One adult and three paediatric patients. And one three-year-old patient with abdominal pain. James and paramedic Libby Hanrahan know that this crash could be complicated. That's a total of four patients, two adults, two teams. Total of four patients, three-year-old, five-year-old, seven-year-old, and adult female. That's a vehicle into a tree, 60 kilometres an hour. Seven-year-old query, fractured clavicle. Five-year-old with chest pain. And a 38-year-old female with central survival pain and query LOC prior to the accident. Landing's going to be tricky. You've got some fencing under us directly now. Okay. Close back at our three o'clock. That was two. Final check, selenium gears down three greens up here, which is 102. Clear to send right, check left. Be clear to send left and right with 40 to run. The team will have to drive the mile and a half to the accident scene. The littlest children is the most serious injured, as far as we're aware. That makes life difficult because kids are inherently a little bit trickier for lots of different reasons, but harder to transport as well. This is the little triage centre that they've put together. I'm going to say hello. The family has been in a high-impact crash, and Dr James knows the children's smiles could be masking serious injuries. The family was following Dad Chris on a cycling challenge when the crash happened. Charlotte, age three, and Amelia, age seven, are causing the most concern. And I missed your name. What was your name? Charlotte. 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 And has, has the bear got a name? So what's your name? My name's Dr. James. <laughs> Beautiful. Dr. James knows, as a new dad himself, it's yep. best to keep smiling. James, I, I do have a pink bow at home that I wear and all the time. <laughs> Call it Jamie. Now, I hear you've got a bit of a sore tummy. Is that right? Let's have a look at this tummy of yours. Oh, wow. He fears Charlotte may have an internal injury. Can you blow your tummy out like it's a big drum for me? Whoa, oh, look, look at, at that, that, big tummy. <laughs> Where's your owl? Um, my tummy. On your Where tummy. Else? And on my back. On your back. Children are especially difficult to treat. They find it hard to describe symptoms, and their young metabolisms can compensate for injuries for a long time before suddenly deteriorating. Let me go and say hello to Amelia, because she's all quiet, and you're all chatty. You've got a friend to talk to here. 
Amelia is much quieter than her sister. That could be a bad sign. It looks like she's fractured her collarbone. And I'm a doctor. Which bit on you hurt the most at the moment? Up here. Dr. James now faces a dilemma. He can only fly two patients to the hospital. The question is, which two? Amelia, Charlotte, their brother Daniel, or their mum, who may have injured her spine. It's a difficult decision. Australia is home to nearly half a million Aboriginal people. Although they make up just 2.4% of the total population, in the outback they often outnumber their European neighbours. They live by traditions that date back 40,000 years. They have Aboriginal law, white man's law, and um, Aboriginal law succeeds ours really, and with white man's law they don't really pay that much attention. In small towns like Laverton, 500 miles from Perth, it's Brits who uphold the law. Sarah Denny left Liverpool to become an outback cop. We carry um, a Glock. That We've got two magazines, we've got 15 rounds in each magazine. I've had seven years of, of practice shooting. That's definitely got my confidence up now, so I do feel quite confident if I have got to draw it that my aim should be pretty good. <laughs> Laverton, population 250, is so isolated, even the appearance of a mobile phone signal is a moment for celebration for Welsh-born senior constable Damien Einan williams Oh, I got some signal. Briefly, I got, I got some emails through, so. He's a trained lawyer who acts as a prosecutor in the local courthouse. It's laid out exactly like a, a normal courtroom. We'll literally do something um, on, on video link here, down to Kalgoorlie, from 330 kilometres away. The local policing team lives with the harsh realities of life in the Australian desert. Summer temperatures average more than 40 degrees Celsius, and the nearest big superstore is a 10-hour drive. So Laverton is um, very isolated in the sense that we're almost a thousand kilometres from Perth. You can get very still crazy here. Basically, you want to be getting out of here every sort of couple of months, really. Uh, if you spend too long here, you do kind of go a little bit, a bit la la. Gary Simpson is another Liverpudlian. Barely. His partner in uniform and at home is Lorena Cruz Parker. So we're on an afternoon shift. Um, so we work from 4, 4 p.m. until midnight. Um, and then another crew starts at 7 p.m. and they'll work till 3 in the morning. I'm the sober driver. Who's in the car? My son, he don't drink. Hello. There's a major problem with drink driving in the outback, and some of Australia's most dangerous roads are unsurfaced. OK, one long breath till I say stop. No, stop. Take a deep breath and blow until I say no, stop. No, OK, try again. You don't need a licence to drive off-road, but if you don't hold one, the permitted level of alcohol in your blood is zero. You've been drinking? Well, yes, you have. No. So when was your last drink? That's only about two cans. So you have had a few drinks. And okay. I'm a diabetic. All right. Diabetic. Well, you're going to have to come back to the station for a breath test, okay? Jump in. You got anything in your pockets? Nothing. Okay. a central part of Aussie culture. The woman's in town for a funeral. Whether she gets to go to it will depend on a further breath test at the police station. For the people of the bush, the flying doctor is an Aussie icon, bringing life-saving care from the skies to the remotest corner of the outback. 
but Dr Chris Cheeseman's patients are the people of Australia's biggest city. In Sydney, the CareFlight helicopter is a familiar sight, flying a highly trained trauma doctor direct to the scene of accidents. Chris used to do his rounds at a hospital in Staffordshire. Now he covers 5,000 square miles of Australia's most populated state. 369 your channel currently at Westmead responding to the two immediate officer. Today's mission is to a waste disposal site in the suburbs where a worker has been badly injured in an industrial accident. What have we got for a landing site near there? There are wires on the western north really? northwestern mm -hmm. side. Yep. Uh, loose dirt on the ground as well, so the bit dust kicked up also. Probably it's all fairly high fencing, isn't it? Yeah, getting out of everywhere. Is an issue. Let's look for the closest option. Golf course Pretty at two o'clock right. with low fence. Copy that. Mobilise to your location. The team's going to have to hitch a lift to the patient. Three, two, one. Right here, we'll go on toes on. The police work closely with the care flight team. The patients are a mile from the landing site. Yeah, we're good, right. How was your flight out, boys? Yeah, not bad. Nice day for us. Everyone, for my care flight, Dr. Shrill must be on top of them. Yeah, radio. Yeah, that's 25 there. Yeah. I'm Chris, one of the doctors. How are you doing? How's the pain for you now? Just done that hip. Area. You walk for a bit, Keith? Yeah, I walk from one side to the other. But then... Keith Haslip is 64. He was crushed by heavy machinery he was using. He's lucky to be alive. What have his numbers been like with you? Uh, he was 120 systolic, I think they got him, and 110 heart rate initially. The morphine, that's the only thing we've done for him so far. Chris suspects Keith has serious internal injuries. The first paramedics on scene have used a brace to hold his pelvis together. Are you guys starting to use these now? A broken pelvis is agonising, and moving Keith from his stretcher into the chopper could worsen the injury. Dr Chris decides to drive his patient to hospital. We go by the road, what, 25 minutes to Westmead? Go, go. Keith is impressed by the speed of the care flight response. How's that sore down here, is it, or where's that sore? In your pelvis or in your tummy? Yeah, across the like, it seems to be right, right across. All right, mate, um, what I'm going to do is a bit of a scan of your tummy. Okay, we've got our little ultrasound machine there. Okay. All right, just mainly looking for fluid, okay? Did it crush you from the front or side? Or oh, side on. Side on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pardon me. Hip to hip. Yep. Well, I heard a crack, so yeah. I don't know what that was, but... Yeah, had a bit of pain there, mate. Um, might have broken his pelvis or his hip there. Chris is giving Keith a powerful painkiller. Yeah, well, ketamine is uh, an excellent drug for this type of environment because it takes away all that pain and discomfort and that anxiety. It makes his journey a lot more comfortable. So we've only given a small dose. I'm going the other way. <laughs> Who's got priority there then? <laughs> Whoever's got the most guts to just keep driving. <laughs> Keith's not today's only casualty, but a medical team is already awaiting his arrival at the Westmead Hospital, Sydney's biggest. Dr Chris used to work here, and his former colleagues soon confirm his hunch. X-rays reveal Keith's pelvis is broken in two. So that's a open book pelvis fracture. Classically you see with these type of crush injuries, that should be attached to that. So it's, uh, it is quite a serious injury. So the paramedics putting on the pelvic binder it's seen. It certainly was a very useful and essential um, intervention from their point of view. Um, and the good news for him is that there was no blood in his uh, pelvis there. So um, it should all turn out to be pretty good for him. So a very lucky escape I'd say. Keith spends two months in the West Mead, but he's determined that one day he'll return to work.
Western Australian police pound the biggest beat in the world. 1.6 million square miles, covering almost half this vast continent. And Laverton is one of its most remote outposts. Being here is completely different than being in Merseyside. I was on um, a burglary team and a robbery team, but I've come out here in the country and I deal with absolutely everything, um, from stealings to burglaries to assaults, um, a lot of domestic violence. They don't get taken off us by detectives. We have to see the whole thing through. For British cops, Lorena Cruz Parker and her partner, Gary Simpson, a routine traffic stop has just taken a more serious turn. We'll just see if the sergeant's got your licence details here. Your licence is suspended. When were you last in court? My court was here, but I changed it evidently in Warburton. Their suspect, it turns out, is wanted for failing to appear in court earlier this year. And she's also banned from driving for life. Well, according to our system, there's a warrant, an arrest warrant out for you because you, you didn't attend court at Warburton. So the magistrate then has issued a be bench warrant for you. It means that even if she passes a second breath test, she may not be going home tonight. So take a deep, big deep breath and blow into the machine and I'll tell you exactly when to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. Perfect. So you blew into the machine and you gave a reading of 0 0.079 grams of alcohol in your blood. Okay? Now do you know what it's the... It's in my blood, is yeah? a medication. Do you know the legal limit of what you can have in I'm your system? A... Do you know what you're allowed in your system yeah, in I'm WA? Not, I'm not a greedy person in life. So it's zero, listen, lane. it's 0 0.05, so okay? Woman. But because you don't have a license, you're subject to zero. She's going to be spending the night in the local lockup. Tomorrow, the drink driver will face a court. Do you want to contact ALS, Aboriginal Legal Service? Yep. Okay. Tonight, Lorena is the chef, as well as the arresting officer. So the lady, she'll get a... She's requested that she has some dinner. So, and on an evening time, we give them a pie, which gets warmed in the microwave. Okay. Do you want some magazines or something? Would you like a newspaper? Her suspect is well fed, but there are some unobtainable English delicacies the British Outback cops crave. I miss fish and chips. I miss Holland cheese and onion pies. I miss prawn cocktail crisps. I miss Greg's cheese and onion pasties. <laughs> uh, cheese and onion crisps. Skips, boxits, hula hoops. <laughs> Oh, I miss all the food in England. In the woods around the Hawkesbury River, just outside Sydney, a family outing has ended in a serious road accident. Flying doctor James Milligan is trying to decide which of three children will be flown to the hospital in the city. Now I'm going to have a little gentle feel on this side, OK? Is this where it's sore on the other side? Seven-year-old Amelia appears to have a broken collarbone. Her brother Daniel has chest pain. So I'm thinking these two, possibly dad as well. Yeah. Two in stretchers, yeah. one in the back seat. Yeah, we just need to work out waiting things, but that we would optimally take as many as we can. So far, they've been lucky. Collisions with trees are a major cause of road deaths down under and back home, but their car seats appear to have saved them. All the kids are doing OK. Yeah. All right. All this is just precautionary. Dr James is trying to reassure the kid's mum, who was driving, it wasn't her fault. Charlotte's tummy now is nice and soft, OK? Now she's had some painkiller. You can hear her talking away, can't you? She never stops. Well, she's, she's keeping going now. All right, so that's really pretty reassuring for us. What we're going to do... It's going to get you to stand up, get off this hard ground, watch your sister, and we'll just get you over onto this stretcher over here. The kids are going to be flown direct to the Westmead Hospital in Sydney, 30 miles away. It's getting dark, and taking off from the confined landing site could be risky. That's the worst colour I've ever put on. That's all right, it always changes when you lay down. We've taken Charlotte. I'll look after Mummy, and you go with Dr James, because he will look after you, OK? Yeah, 
And you give Jamie the bear a cuddle and we can get you a blanket. <laughs> oh, where'd it go? On lift? Yep. Ready, steady, lift. Here we go. You're, You're flying! Yeah. Best day ever! Whoa. You are the funniest kid. Oh, Should we get rid of this one? Yeah. yeah. In a house. In a house? <laughs> no. So this helicopter is very noisy. Yes. Okay, so it's a bit it can be a bit loud. But that's not something to be scared of, is it? No. It's gonna be a couple of little bumps. The teams brought intensive care direct to the woods where the crash happened. Bit bumpy, Amelia. Now it's time to fly. Rescue 2-4 will be taking off with three passengers, including Dad. Uh, they're all doing great. Like, yeah. This is all precautionary. Yeah, I, I, I know. But, uh, but uh, it's... And, uh, yeah. yeah. It's... I've, yeah, I haven't seen worse, but I know there is worse. Yeah. They're pretty trendy glasses. Don't get them stuck on your nose. It's getting a bit loud now, OK? Rescue 2-4 will have the family in hospital in less than half an hour. Uh, we'll come up to 200 uh, feet. Any problems we'll board here, otherwise we'll continue airborne. Yeah, that's good. Sure. I'm just going to kill the lights. Oh, thank you. Yeah, just, you can bring them down. You can bring them down. But there's no margin for error in terrain like this. OK, lifting. And it's uh, time to yeah, Trees are feet from the rotor blades. Uh, shall I just get a little bit higher and then we'll take the right? You're clear of obstacles on the left. Better rotate left. And uh, rotating. Power lines off to our right. Yeah, you got them visual. And on the nose there. Dr. James and paramedic Libby must get used to monitoring their patients in almost total darkness. Any bright lights could blind the pilots. We are loaded with two paediatric patients and a parent tracking to Westmead kids and we'll be on the ground there at 1836. Libby's alerting doctors at the Westmead to be ready for their young patients. Their brother is being driven to A&E, as is their mother. Be soon on descent into Westmead. Weather's good. Beautiful night for flying. Sydney's cityscape is spectacular by night, but the team's focus is on the landing ahead. Rescue 24 is touching down within yards of A and E. You were saying they'd like us to slide right, park off to the right, okay. turn right, push, sliding right. Yeah, you touch really? left as well. Yeah, just park the tail over. Thanks, Rescue 2-4 at 1840. Thank you. Switching back to uh, State 1. Over the next two hours, doctors will be assessing the kids and scanning them for internal injuries. This is Charlotte. She's three years old. She was a restrained passenger in the back in a good child seat. No significant injuries found. She just had one vomit in the helicopter as we came into land, so be careful when you're filling around. Only real thing, a little bit of tongue pain, a little bit of lower back pain. Amelia is Charlotte's big sister. She's seven years old. Again, in the rear, in a good car seat. Um, she self-extricated, but had some pain in her left foot and had some difficulty walking on it. Nothing much to see there. Um, and she also complained of some pain in her right shoulder with a very obvious seatbelt mark there and a query of a clavicle fracture. Thankfully, nothing serious is found beyond Amelia's collarbone. And it looks like brother's just arrived. So patient number three's here. And they're sent home to recover from what's been a very frightening ordeal, made more bearable by their British flying doctor. It's a new dawn in the red desert of Western Australia. So I'll just print that out for you, just so you've got a copy of it in case you need it. All right, I'll have you get a court. The woman arrested yesterday is due to appear in court via CCTV. But there's an unexpected problem. The prisoner is complaining of pain from an ankle injury. You are right? Really? When did that happen? Yeah, 
Run in, let's get to the hospital. Damien and Sarah have sought medical advice about their prisoner's ankle. She's off to the local clinic for a checkup. Laverton's largely Aboriginal population has relatively poor health by Aussie standards. Life expectancy is 10% shorter than their European neighbours. Diabetes is another health problem that afflicts many indigenous people out here. Their suspect is a sufferer. What she doesn't apparently have is an ankle injury, and she's soon back in court for her virtual appearance before the bench. Her fate is in the hands of a magistrate more than 200 miles away, in the gold mining town of Kalgoorlie. Senior Constable Damien is doubling as prosecution counsel. I'm a qualified lawyer here in Western Australia, and um, I've, I've actually done a prosecuting course and spent some time at Perth prosecuting. Um, so it is a bit different. Obviously in the UK you have um, the Crown Prosecution Service, so you have own, own solicitors and um, barristers there that, that actually do, do this kind of work. But we're obviously expected to do it as well. It's a short hearing, and the verdict is bad news for the suspect. She's basically been remanded in custody. It wasn't as simple as I, as I first thought, because it was actually two JPs as opposed to one. So they could have actually granted a bail today, but being the fact that um, I put forward a good argument, yeah, she's been remanded in custody. The woman is on her way to jail via one of the world's most unusual prison transport vehicles. The main custody area is in Kalgoorlie, which is like 330 kilometres away, approximately. So we're going to take her now and um, put her on the plane, and they'll fly her down to the prison. Australia operates its own fleet of jailbirds. Twin-engine planes shuttling detainees from the outback to big city jails. We've got bitumen roads leading out uh, from here down to, down to Kalgoorlie. Um, but it, just, it basically just takes too long. <laughs> it's just started to rain. Horrendous. <laughs> and it's very windy. This is not actually typical of Laverton. I mean, it does rain a little bit in the winter, which is now, but generally it's about 46 degrees in the summer. Last day in work today, and then, um, then I'll be flying out to uh, my sunny Bali, get a bit of, uh, bit of sun, a bit of a tan. means they have little time for upholding the law and it's finally time to get back on patrol. Despite the isolation, neither Damien nor Sarah would return to the UK. Just 6,000 officers maintain the thin blue line in Western Australia. Hundreds are Brits and there's no shortage of recruits wanting to join them down under.